Oops. Hello, my beautiful subscribers. Uh, I just, um, I forgot to record and someone just reminded me. Uh, so I covered uh, the derivative of cosine and tangent. Go look at the notes um, because that is lost forever. So now we're doing the chain rule. <clears throat> so uh, there's a ball moving on the TV. Uh, the ball is moving at 200 kilometers per hour. Thank you so much for reminding me. So the question is how fast the ball is going in reality at 200 kilometers per hour, but, the, but it's not it's not going that fast. On your, the, the ball you see on the screen is not going that fast. Um, it's probably going slower. Um, so the thing is, uh, what do you need to know? What do you need to know to figure out what the speed of the the image is? So, um, so to know that, um, you need to know what the, well, you need to, that's going to depend on your TV. It's going to depend, uh, if you have a faster TV, the ball is going to move. Uh, if you have a bigger TV, the ball is going to move faster. Uh, and if the camera, and it also depends on what the camera angles, uh, is like, um, but say um and also the image i mean it's not a the scale is not the same at every point in the image not even i feel like if i move to the side of the 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 camera my face changes shape but in reality my face is the is the same shape all the time if it was a wider lens uh you could tell better but um the thing is how much the, the TV stretches thing, um, but let's say that around the ball, um, one meter, looks like uh, 10 centimeters. Which is 0.1 meters. <clears throat> so, uh, so this is the problem. And I think, I think you know the answer. I, I think you know the answer. What's the answer? I hope I'm right. The silence is painful. Any guesses? Twenty thousand, twenty thousand what? Twenty thousand. You need units there, centimeters. That's not a unit of speed. I don't know if you're messing with me on the chat. Zoom needs emojis. And then I can make you pay extra to get more emojis. I 
I feel like you probably have seen a screen in your life and you probably know how fast things move. Um, where can I? 55 meters per second. Where are you getting 55? 20 kilometers per hour. 2, 2K centimeters per hour. 2 centimeters per hour. If I say yards, we'll make it easier. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, the answer is of Sam one here. Um, the answer is that if if everything in the screen, so if if one meter looks like 0 0.1 meters, that means that everything in the screen is ten times smaller. Uh, for example, well, maybe it's possible that on your phone, my face right now is 10 times smaller than it is. If I move, you're seeing me go 10 times slower. So 200 kilometers per hour is going to turn into 20 kilometers per hour. Um, so <clears throat> the answer. I should draw a picture before. Um, so here, here he is. Oh, um, what's the word? Graceful, all oh, graceful like. Here's the ball. Um, and the ball has speed lines which are worth 200 kilometers per hour. So that means, uh, well, that means that in one hour, uh, the distance it has traveled in, in reality is 200 kilometers. So here there's a camera uh, watching this. Well, I guess. Uh, and as you know, 21st century cameras all have a uh, crank. So the camera is watching this and this is going into your TV. And your TV is probably smaller than a tennis court. But I can't throw it smaller, right? Because if I don't draw it smaller. If I draw it smaller, you can't see. So here's your TV. And here's the image of the wall. And the image of the wall is, um, well, time. So the thing about TV is that normally, Time goes the same, uh, goes the same speed unless you're watching the slow mo um, replay. But um, the distance is two hundred kilometers. Uh, magnified or shrunk uh, 10 times. So the image of the the image of the wall uh, moves 20 kilometers in one hour. See the only seconds to the night. Kilometers, kilometers. Okay. So, so that's the problem. That's the answer. Uh, but now the real question is: Where, where are there 
where are there two functions um, uh, whose composition I'm doing the derivative of? Well, you know that speeds are derivatives. Um, So the, the question is, what is the derivative? What is what is 200 kilometers per hour the derivative of? What is 20 kilometers per hour the derivative of? So the speed of the ball is the derivative respect to time of the position. The speed is the derivative of the position. So let's call this whole thing, let's call it f of t. So I'm going to say f of t is the position of the, of the real life ball. At time t. And then we know that the derivative at some point is 200 kilometers per hour. Um, so then there's another function, which is a um, much more interesting function. There's a function which is essentially what the camera is doing. There's a function which takes a simple where the ball is and spits the place in your screen where it is. Um, so I'm going to say that g of x uh, is the um, um, is the position in the screen of um, This corresponds to x meters away from so this is a very interesting function. It takes it takes a position in the tennis courts and it spits out a position on your screen. Uh, so for example, well, if it's maybe uh, one meter away from the player, it's in, um, well, let's see. So here's the, here's the tennis player and here's, uh, different points. So here's 10 meters, 10 meters. So this is real life. And if this was, um, if you were watching this on TV, maybe you would see these dots that I just drew. at different distances. Um, so maybe well say that this one these are all one meter. So this will tell you that G of 10, so uh, G of 10 meters is one meter. Um, this is saying that The black dot, ten meters 
away is uh, one meter away on the screen. So that's what this function is doing. Um, if you look at the red dot, the red dot is 20 meters away. And on the screen, it's just two meters away. So this is what G is. So what is the composition then? Oh my God, I haven't switched pages in 10 minutes. Nobody said anything. Where are you? What's happening? Um, so now, okay. Um, so, so there's this function g, which eats a place in in the tennis court and spits a place on the TV. Um, and the place on the the tennis court is given by the distance to the player. So, for example, this red dot, this black dot is 10 meters away from the player. And on the screen, it's just one meter away from the player. So that means that G of 10 is gonna be one. The, the second, the red dot is 20 meters away. Uh, in real life, on the screen, it's, it's two meters away. You have a huge TV, I guess. Um, that means that G of 20 is two. So that's the other function. So I have two functions now. I have one that tells me, given the time, tells me a position in the courts of the ball. And the other one, given the position in the court, tells me a position on the TV. So what is the composition? Uh, well, if I have a time doing F, gives me the position of the ball at time C. Doing G, G is something I do to a position. It gives me the, the corresponding place on the screen. So if I do one arrow, then the next, that means that if I start at time t, what I get and what the answer of g composed with f is, is the position on the screen of the ball at time t. So that's G composed with F. So G composed with F is a function that if I give it time, it gives me position. That means that the derivative is the speed of uh, in the, the image. So uh, let's put it all together. <clears throat> um, that that is a position of all. Um, In real life, and the composition is the position of the image. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Right. Um, and now we said the derivative is the speed of the ball. Which in this case is 20 kilometers per hour. The derivative of decomposed with f is the speed of the image of the ball. That is 20 kilometers per hour. Um, and what is the derivative of g? Well, um, it's um, it's a bit it's a bit harder to understand, but we can. the The derivative is the is the change in position in on this is there's a change in the output. The output is the position on the screen divided by the change in the input. The input is the the position in the court. So what does that mean? It, uh, it's asking if I move if something if I move something a meter in the courts, how much does it move in the screen? And I said, uh, well, I just said that ten meters. No, I said that ten meters on the on the courts, or one meter. I said one meter. One meter on the courts becomes. 0.1 meters on on the screen. So this derivative is going to be 0 0.1. And finally, how did I get the answer? This answer that I wanted, well, I got it by um, by multiplying. I got it by doing 200 kilometers per hour multiplied by 0 0.1. Uh, and most importantly, I got it by multiplying f prime of t times g prime of x. What is it? g prime, I, I don't, g prime doesn't need time, it needs a position. Um, and that's the chain rule, that's the y of the chain rule. Um, maybe this gave you some intuition for why composing gives you multiplication of speeds. Um, maybe it didn't. You can ask me questions. Um, you should ask me questions. <clears throat> I feel like, I feel like I don't know what the tone of that is. Like if we were in a class, I would be staring down your blank faces and making you ask me ask me questions. But um, I kind of have to take your word for it here. Um, probably probably bad that I'm doing this. Okay. Well, the good news is that. The chain rule is just an algebraic thing that we can, in practice, most of, a lot of the time we apply it blindly. Of course, maybe the maybe the few occasions when we apply it not blindly are the, the times where it's interesting to do it. But, uh, so anyway, what does the chain rule say? The chain rule says that if you take a composition and you want to take the derivative, that derivative is the same thing as taking the derivatives of f and g and, and composing and multiplying them. Not composing, multiplying them. The thing is, I can't put x into f prime. That doesn't make sense. What I need to put into f prime is g of x. 
is it's really the only thing that makes sense. Um, but you, this formula is complicated to understand because you got to understand what you're plugging into what, and you have to be very careful with what am I taking the derivative of with respect to what. It takes a lot of practice, and I'm gonna do some examples, but that doesn't examples uh, can't replace your own practicing. Maybe you see me do things that make sense to you, but uh, you don't realize how little things make sense until you do them by yourself. So, um, find um, f prime and plug in g of x is what this means. So let's do let's do an example. Um, let's do the derivative of um, the square root of x squared um, x squared plus one. And while we're here, let's um, find the derivative at x equals negative two. So by the way, this function should probably have a derivative at x equals negative two. x equals negative two is in the domain. When I plug in negative two in there, I get uh, I get five inside of the square root. So even though x is negative, the square root doesn't turn out to be negative. Uh, so I'm, I'm fine. The domain of this function is all the real numbers. So the first step, so, I'm going to do this very carefully. Uh, do you have to do it as carefully? No, but the less careful, you know, the, the more steps you do in your head, the more mistakes, the more chances to make mistakes. So up to you. So the first step is, um, well, OK, I should use the chain rule because I wrote it just below the chain rule. What is this a composition of? Um, if um, this is the composition of g and f. What are f and g? <clears throat> um, what are f and g? What is this function a composition of? Would it be the square root of x squared and then the square root of one? No, uh, sorry, uh, but it's um, it's good that you it's good that you guys. Um, <clears throat> uh, the only way to learn is to make mistakes. Miles, um, the square root of x and x squared plus one. Square root of x and x squared plus one. I think that's gonna work. Um, but really, the only way to know is to check. So in the first option, um, when I do f composed with g, that means I write f, well, I write f, um, and wherever there was an x, I need to write g of x. So, if I understood correctly, g was supposed to be the square root of one. Uh, and, and this is not what I wanted to get. This is not square root of x squared plus one. Uh, this is just this is just one. This is a constant function. So this doesn't work. But um, I mean, the only way to know that was to do it. So. Now we know. I do really appreciate you participating. Um, I might appreciate even more if you got things wrong, because that tells me 
Uh, you told me what you know and what you don't. Um, so let's do the same thing with Miles's answer. F compose, uh, she compose with F. So I write down F and then wherever there was an X, I need to plug in G of X. And according to Miles, G of X is the square root of A X squared plus one. And that is, that is what I want. Okay, so I got my F and I got my G. So now let's take the derivative, the derivatives that I need to multiply. So the square root I know I can do by the power rule. Uh, one half x to the one half minus one, which is one half x to the negative one half. Because the base is x and the exponent is a constant. If unless the base is x and the exponent is a constant, this is not going to work. Um, so, um, so this is the answer. One half x to the negative one half. I could write this as one over two root x. Same, same thing. The derivative of g uh, is a polynomial, so doesn't really don't really need to think about this. You just use the power rule blindly. It's a polynomial. The base is x everywhere. So now I'm supposed to multiply them, but the answer is not um, the answer is not this times that because I need to take f prime of x and plug in g for x. Um, So, for that um, for that negative exponent, right? Oh, never mind. Uh, so the negative exponent is is just like having the positive exponent, the opposite in the denominator. Um, doesn't matter. I mean, you would get the correct answer however you write it. But I kind of prefer one over root x, two x to the negative one half. So um, f composed with g prime, according to the chain rule, is it's f prime when I plug in g of x, multiply it by g of x. <clears throat> so let's do it here. What do I get when I plug in g of x into f prime? I get that everywhere that there's an x, I need to write g of x. Uh, and writing g of x means, um, well, no, x squared plus one. That was g prime. g of x is x squared plus one. Like it's written there. So this is gonna be one over two root x squared plus one times 2x. To cancel the two, don't really need to, but might as well. So that's the answer. Um, and this is how you do it. <clears throat> and that's pretty much how you do it every time. Are there any questions? So maybe you don't realize, but at this point with the chain rule and all the other stuff, you know, you could find the derivative of any function you could write down, except ones that involve logs and inverse trig functions. Those are the only ones we haven't seen yet, but now you can take so, so many derivatives. Um, so, okay. I wrote a lot to do this a derivative. I know, I know in practice you're not going to write so much. Um, but can g of x be replaced by another letter like u? Asks Matthew. Totally. Um, that's something. Yeah, that's completely fine to do. It's probably a good idea. That way, it reminds you that the domain of f is not the same as g. Um, let's do that for another example. So um, let's do um, 
What should I do? Uh, the derivative um, of sine squared. So again, I'm going to use the channel. Sine squared is the composition of two functions. So this is an example where you cannot use a product rule. Um, the, the the product rule. You can you can use a product rule. You cannot use the power rule because this is not a power of x. This is a power of sine of x, and that is just not going to work. What's going to work is using the chain rule. So what is this a composition of? Um, if sine of sine squared of x is decomposed with f, um, what is f and what is g? What am I doing first? That's going to be g, and what am I doing? to the answer, and that's going to be f. Actually, I said I'm going to use, use all these letters, so let's use f. Um, yeah. Mm. X and sine? X and sine. Well, x squared. x squared, OK. So I said, saying x squared is the same thing as saying u squared. The letter doesn't matter. And actually, it's better, less confusing if you use two different letters, um, because that way you don't get them mixed up. So this is this is correct. Um, when you do uh, f composed with g, that means, so I wrote here f of u, that means that Everywhere where there's a U, I need to write a G. Make U equals G of X. And now uh, G of X is the sign. And that is, that is the function we want. Sine squared of X. Okay, so the derivative of F uh, is 2u, that's the, just the power rule. The derivative of g is the cosine. I know that one by heart. So the derivative of the composition, the derivative I'm interested in, I could write it, so instead of writing um, f prime of g of x, I could write just f prime of u and say that uh, u is g of x. So if I do that, um, then the answer is the product of the two derivatives I wrote over there, 2u times uh, cosine x. And now, so, I mean, this is the answer, but I cannot give this as an answer because u is something that I, uh, a letter that I, pull out of my pants, you pull out of my sleeve, out of my pocket. <laughs> Oops, um, English is hard. Uh, so I can use you in the answer. If you're watching TV while during my class, don't unmute yourself. I can't choose you in the answer um, because because I um, you know I put it I put it there to to make things easier. Um, I uh, what's the expression I'm looking for? Not pull it out of thin air. Pull it out of my ass is what I was looking for. I'm learning so much English with you guys. I pulled it out um, to say that you was G of X. So what I should really be doing is re replacing it back by what it is. 
Um, so the moral is that I can pull letters out of my ass, um, but I, I can't give an answer in terms of something I invented. And that's the, um, and that's the answer. Now there's no use the answers in terms of X and the derivative of sine squared is indeed two sine cosine. All right, I don't know what, what that oof was in response to, <clears throat> but I don't feel oof at all. I feel very accomplished that we learned the chain rule, which is a wonderful thing that is gonna make us so much happier. Can it simply be simplified to sign of 2x? Indeed it can, Matthew. You sure know your trig identities. Wasn't expecting that. Um.